I don't want to disappoint you this morning, but Jesus is not coming to save his church at all. Good morning. Is this the end of the world as you know it? And will Jesus come to save his church? And if you're a Christian this morning and uh, or a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, what should you and I be doing at this time? Well, welcome to Time Out. My name is Jack Vint. And you'll be excused to think that this is the end of the world as you know it. Because of the rapid change that is happening in the world. Now, there's always been change in the world. But it's the speed of change that is causing us to feel uncomfortable. Change in politics. Change in the social welfare. Change in medicines. Change in politics change in finances you know when a man that should actually be retired in uh, you know in a, a frail care center uh, preferably on medication is running one of the most powerful countries in the world a man that cannot even read off a teleprompter or finish his own sentences without being uh, being told what to say a man that sometimes gets confused where he is or where he is going is leading the most powerful country in the world. Uh, we should be concerned. <laughs> now, the previous president of that country, and I won't say his name, lest the airway police arrest me, they were concerned when he came into power that he was going to just push all the nuclear buttons and start World War Three, Four, and Five. <laughs> Well, there is no danger of this current president doing that because he can't find those buttons to push them. And even if somebody showed him, by the time they finished showing him, he would have forgotten what they said. So in, we are living indeed in interesting times. Now, when I grew up, I was told that socialism and socialistic ideologies was dead. That they, history had proved that they would never ever come about again in our lifetime. And that communism was the great evil that was there to destroy all mankind. Well, fast forward a number of years, and all of a sudden, it seems that socialistic um, ideologies and policies are coming to the fore and becoming popular again. And even communistic, hardcore communistic ideals are surfacing as options. Now, I'm not speaking about communist countries saying this. I'm speaking about Western powers, major Western powers embracing socialism and communism as great options to, as, as far as government is concerned. And I'm talking about Western powers that used to advocate uh, democracy and, and be really the standouts for democracy. And you may ask, why is this happening? Why are they embracing socialism and communism after all these years, knowing that they were the ones saying it will not work, it's failed uh, mankind? Well, I, I believe there's only one reason. The rise of socialism and communism is because it advocates control. The people that are wanting to use it want control. So they see this as a method of control. Now, somebody once said to me recently, there's the one world government is coming. And I disagree with that because uh, I don't believe it's coming. It's already here. But what we should take note of, what you should take note of right now, what is happening right, right at this very moment is the one world voice that is speaking. Now, this one world voice is a narrative. It's propaganda that they are spreading out. And it's, it's, it's uncanny because it's almost like all the, the, the medias and the news outlets are reading from the same chorus line. And they are reading this narrative that they want us to believe. And anybody that disagrees with their narrative, anybody that even slightly disagrees, they are called heretics and they are shut out and shut down strangely isn't that and uh, now the bible says you know 
when we look at, before I say what the Bible says, when we look at what's happening, it's not the church against the world that we are dealing with. This is a clash of kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And, and, and God warned us in his Bible, he said that the kingdom of this world is governed by Satan and he is a liar and he's a thief and we know he's a murderer. But ultimately Jesus said whatever he says is a lie. So when he is controlling what the world is saying, we have to be careful because what the world is then saying could also be a lie. And if we just blankly believe what the world is telling us through their narrative, we could be in danger of believing a lie. And you know, we should be the ones speaking truth because Romans 9 verse 1 says, I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience affirms it by the Holy Spirit. As a Christian, we need to speak the truth because that's the voice that we have. We must be careful that they do not take away our voice because the, our voice should be the voice of truth and we should not speak from the narrative of what the world is saying to us. Now, you may ask, Jack, is Jesus going to come and save his church? I don't want to disappoint you this morning, but Jesus is not coming to save his church at all. We don't need to be saved. We were already saved when Jesus came the first time to die on a cross for us and our sins and to rise again the third day and to receive a power on, on, on high and, and take authority. So we don't have to be saved. We have already been saved. As a matter of, it, it, it says, the Bible says that um, 1 John 3 verse 8, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil. God's already done the work. We are not to be rescued. We are the rescuers. We are there to rescue others. We are not there to be saved. We are the enforcers. We are there to enforce what God left for us and as an inheritance to take captive that which he wants to take to heaven. So I want to encourage you this morning. We are not there to be saved. Jesus isn't coming to save his church. Now, I also want to say we need to get out of the trenches because two of the things that's dangerous is that people are hiding in trenches because they're afraid to be a voice. They're afraid to say something. And we must be very careful about that because when the enemy can isolate us and single us out, he can take us out. So we need to get out of the trenches and we must be careful of the chameleon syndrome. You know, the chameleon syndrome is when uh, a chameleon is a fantastic creature. I love them. But you know, one of the things they do is you put them in any background and they blend. To such an extent, you can't see that chameleon. And I feel that this is the threat that we have, that we can become so familiar with what the world narrative is. We will blend into that narrative and we will no longer stand out. And so we will no longer be the voice because our voice will be their voice. And so we need to stand out and we need to speak out because God has created us not to be the, suffer from the, for the chameleon syndrome, but to be the voice of truth in the world. And, uh, and that brings me to, you may ask, Jack, what can I do? What should I be doing at this time? Well, the first thing I want to say to us is we need to get back into the church. Now, if you've been in a church and uh, you're not there anymore, maybe you are, you've been offended or hurt in a church, maybe you've offended and hurt somebody, whatever the case is, if you've offended and hurt somebody, forgive yourself. And if others have offended you, forgive them. But get back into the church. Because, uh, you know, I've been in the church for 50 years. And when people say, and I've also been hurt and offended many times. The reason I'm still there is because there is no other entity in the whole Bible that says that God is going to use to carry out his purposes, especially in end times. So you don't want to miss out. I don't want to miss out what God's going to do and the action's all going to be in the church and you need to be in the church. Now, I know you're saying, but you know, uh, but there is no perfect church and you're right. You know, I personally am quite close to perfection because my wife tells me that if I improve another 99%, 
I'm going to be 100% perfect. <laughs> well, that's just a joke. But you know, yes, you're right. There is no perfect church because when you go there, uh, it's no longer going to be perfect because you are the church and I am the church. And that's what God's called us to do. And, and maybe you're in a church and it's going nowhere. Well, maybe you should bring some momentum to that church. And if after everything you try, they don't want to find another body of Christ, find another church and start making a difference. But don't use it as an excuse to stay out of action. You know, when the enemy isolates us like Adam, when Adam made a mistake and he listened to a lie in the Garden of Eden, he, 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 he stumbled in his purpose. And when God found him in his paradise, visiting him there, you know, the first thing that Adam felt was guilty and he was hiding behind a tree from God and he felt ashamed and naked. And that's exactly how the devil wants us to feel, ashamed and naked. He wants us to hide in our trench. He wants to say, you made such a mistake, you can never fix it. But it's a lie. God has forgiven us. He's forgiven you. You can be uh, revived. You can come out of that tree, behind that tree. You can come out of that shame and guilt. And you can be used again by God. So get back into the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's the only entity that's going to take you to where God wants you to be. And then, of course, you know, uh, the second thing that you can do at this time is you can check your passion barometer. You know, the world is crushing our passion. When we listen to all the rhetoric, when we listen to all the things they're saying, we lose our passion. We need to stop listening to what the world's saying and listen to what God's saying because that will build our faith. And when, and that will build our passion. Maybe you need to go back and take a walk and read the Bible. Maybe you should go and meditate a bit and pray. Maybe you should get involved in some church activity that revives you. Or maybe a community activity that helps other people. Whatever it takes, get back your passion at all costs because God is on the move and you know and of course lastly you know the, the, the what you can do is you can take out those guns those weapons of warfare spiritual weapons God has given us you know the Bible says when when as a matter of fact Matthew 28 verse 18 says when Jesus ascended you know uh, rather when Jesus was about to ascend he, he said to his disciples all power is given to me go so he gave us a mandate when before he left to say I've got power so you've got power go and then in Ephesians 4 verse 8, it says, when he ascended, he gave gifts to men. So God didn't just give us a mandate. He gave us the weapons of warfare to fight this battle that is going to take place right now in the end times. So don't be alarmed. You are not left. And then, of course, it says also, if you read another scripture, why is it that we have to rescue some people that are, are, uh, that, that are in the world is because 2 Corinthians 4 says the God of this world or the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light. See, people aren't our problem. Uh, we're not fighting against uh, people. We fight against principalities and powers. And that's why we need weapons of warfare to annul their, their effect on people that's causing blindness and confusion and take them out. Of that confusion and bring them into the light what a wonderful time to be alive this is our finest hour as the church this is your finest hour to accomplish something great for God so take those weapons of warfare out point them at those principalities and powers and in the name of Jesus claim the victory and rescue people out of darkness into light because that's who you've been called to be as the church now, if you ask me, Jack, is this indeed the end of the world as we know it? I want to say that it depends on which kingdom you are standing. If you are standing in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of light, this may just be the beginning of the world as it should be. God bless you. You've been watching Time Out. My name is Jack Vint, and I'll catch you next week. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song.